When crossword puzzles had begun in 1913, they eventually got so popular that an editor had to be hired to do it every week. Margaret Farrer wanted to do real journalistic things in her life, but she was told, okay, you have to edit the crossword puzzle from now on, which she didn't want to do. So she finally thought, okay, I'll sit down and actually do this. And by doing that, over the course of a couple of years, she standardized puzzles. It's amazing what we still use today from, that, from those days. The rule about one-sixth of the diagram can be black squares. The fact that it's all over interlock. You can't have little islands of words separated from everything else. No two-letter words. Symmetry, the fact that if you turn a crossword puzzle upside down, the arrangement of black squares stays the same. And there's word choice rules. You can't use usually bodily functions in puzzles. You know, urine would bail me out of a corner, I mean, a million times a year. Same with enema. Enema, talk about great letters but you gotta keep those words out of puzzles. Because it doesn't pass the Sunday morning breakfast test. I mean, there are people solving on Sunday morning, the big Sunday puzzle, they waited all week for this. They're sitting there relaxing and here comes, you know, rectal? I don't think so. As a result of these rules, she became like the first lady of crosswords. And when the New York Times decided to start running a crossword puzzle in 1942, she was the one they picked to do it.